I've been able to do some pretty incredible things and perform at a high level in sport, but there are some things I've yet to achieve. And becoming national champion is one of them. The bar has never been higher for a North American cyclocrosser to make it. To have those championship effort days, you need to have a lot of days where you're laying brick day after day. But to reach that peak, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time digging through the weeds and just covering the basics, especially in the dark when no one else is watching. Ladies and gentlemen, this water has won all. Let's hear it for Curtis White. This fucking sand, whatever. And oftentimes, like when you get into the last lap of a race situation, you're like, it's the last lap. No mistakes, no mistakes. And sometimes that's the most flawed lap you do. Good thing it's only August. I still have a ways to go. What is cyclocross? Simply, it is a closed circuit, about two kilometers, mainly grass, a little road done on a bike that looks like a road bike, but with little knobby mountain bike tires. Well, when you're an older rider, you see the young riders come up. Every once in a while, someone you know catches your eye. Um, but I remember specifically one time at Gloucester, a young Curtis White came up and was banging elbows when I was the national champion and I was really at the peak of my career. And I remember thinking, what are you doing? I mean, of course I knew Curtis for a long time and there was not a lot of mentorship happening at that time, but he was very young, very cocky uh, to be doing that with kind of riders that were very established, but it showed a thing to come. And it's those experiences that now propel him to know he's now that person and there's people nipping at his heels. And in this case, it might be Eric Brenner, but it might be another rider, Scott Funston. There's a lot of riders out there that are gonna be nipping at Curtis's heels. See, this is a personal favorite right here. Speculo Spice. Always makes me think of racing in Europe. The national championships is the biggest goal of the season. We're four months away from nationals, but the nature of cyclocross with it being so intense is that you need to come into the season with a high level of fitness. What sort of ride are we doing? Endurance. Oh, yeah. So the first round of the USCX is down in Roanoke, really hard course, super hilly, uh, really winding like this and that, all left and right, but it's also very, very hot. Curtis came in flying to the season. Ended up coming away with a fifth and a third on the weekend. A good show of consistency, but there was still some sharpening of the blades to be able to get ready for the entire season that was to come all the way through February. It's, uh, yesterday's uh, runner-up, Eric Brunner, and then, uh, the Steve Tilford foundation with uh, Curtis White and then really Holy sh he's starting fast. By, uh, uh, um, Going back and rewatching these races on GCN, the USCX series is huge. There's so much you can pick up on rewatching this footage that you don't really experience in the race. Like I knew Funston had a good start, but I didn't know that he was, he was that explosive. Just seeing it from a different angle. I felt much better day two, landing on the podium. But the C1 was not how I wanted it to go. What really was a no-brainer for me bringing Curtis on board was the fact that his pure and deep love for the sport of cyclocross, his experience and his knowledge, and how I also see he always is reaching out to want to mentor and give back to some of the younger riders. This route here, that's like really late, like right about here. Yeah. Like heavy uh, in alignment with the Steve Tilford Foundation and what I want this team to be to stand for, like Curtis just checked all of the boxes. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, my name is Curtis White, and you are listening to In the Red this morning. The weather outside today is 52 degrees, partly cloudy. It's going to be a beautiful day here in Rochester, New York. I should have been a weatherman. Look at this, it's absolutely gorgeous out. Sun shining, grass is green, lines are gonna be nice and crisp. 
Look at that. that that's, a, that's a really beautiful day. Cyclocross weather. So fun. You good? Yeah, and, uh, I think in all the times we've been in Rochester, this is the first time we've seen mud, so... So, Rochester, New York, rounds three and four of the USCX. Cards are on the table. We all know where each other's at, and it's pretty clear that Vincent Bastons and Eric Bruner are in good form. Looking back at Rochester, you had Vincent Bastons. As I said, he was really on the top of his game, super good. He basically rode away at the beginning. Right away, everybody knew that they were put on notice. Vincent was the strongest guy in the day. So on Sunday, we see the big Belgian, Vincent Bastons. Lots of experience in the mud. If you're from Belgium, then you know how to ride your bike in the mud. Immediately, again, the strongest rider rides away with this one. Then we see the duel between Eric and Curtis come to the forefront again. This classic rivalry, but it's raining today. Lots of precipitation, very steep, muddy incline. Eric crashes, Curtis again rides away. Eric uh, ends up coming in third place. White comes in with second. Performing at our national series is something that is important to me because these events are broadcasted and it's the storyline for our season that fans and spectators have been wanting for years. Charm City, really hard track. But at this course, it's a huge venue, lots of space to really open up and um, go for those big, big engines and very European in style. Gods rained down on Charm City and it got really nasty, super muddy. Brunner had some problems. He ends up running eighth in the final, but this great duel between Vincent Bastons and Curtis White, but it was Curtis that was able to uh, dispatch uh, Vincent Bastons. And for the first time in a while, I mean, when Vincent comes over, he's been so dominant, especially on these tracks. He comes in really, really sharp. He's done super well, and especially on a really heavy, muddy track. But like I said earlier on, it's Curtis that really does a super job being able to hone his skills. He loves the nasty muck, the heavy riding. He's super good in that, and he takes this emphatic victory, which I think gave him a lot of momentum and a lot of excitement for the rest of his season. So after Charm City, the riders make their way north to Falmouth, Massachusetts for a three-day weekend, the Pan American Championships in the last two USCX races, which is the final, and that's also very hotly contested between Curtis and Eric. Now, the Pan American Championships are important because it's the national championships or the Pan American Championships, which includes Canada, South America, and the United States, and there's a ton of UCI points up for grabs. day for hunting jerseys. I'm not facing this way. Good afternoon. Go Second at Pan Am's, it was a disappointment, but to be honest, I felt like I gave what I could on that day. Um, it was a fast, wide open, dry course, and there was a better rider, and I felt like I gave what I could with what I had. It was easy for me to move on from Pan Am's to the next goal, because the next day, we went back to fighting for the USCX overall. Banging on the boards over here. But I believe you got stopped the kill. 
I, that was pure tactics. That one's bad. That was awesome. Thank you. So I'm sorry. Hey, how's everything we had, buddy? That's safe. That was awesome, man. That's what the sport needs. Hey, everyone gets a jersey. I told you, we're hunting jerseys. Yeah. You guys are making the effort. I think it's shown in the sport. The battle with him oh, and great. Funston, that was what this f***ing sports needs. Yeah, I agree. Seriously. Nice job, man. Thank you. That was good. I felt strange not to race for the win on the day, but you know, the series means a lot to us and this is what we're showing up for. So we have people that are willing to cheer us on. I think we put on a good show. So I'm happy with the overall. That, that meant a lot to us. That's it. You did it. I was in like... That was good. What happened on the last lap? Like actually? With Bruner? Yeah, what? Well, he just came around. Like, I was towing his ass all race. You know, he he knew I was racing for the series and I wanted to make sure I didn't have function. So I, I basically gave him a free tow and gave him the race. Yeah. Curtis White is your 2022 USCX champion. Winning the USCX was a big goal of mine. And while I was thrilled to achieve that goal and check that box. I was still looking at Falmouth as for the last three races in a row, I'm finishing second to Eric. Eric's clearly on good form and I was pissed that I couldn't respond to that. And then so for nationals, we like got back to rebuilding, got behind the scooter more and, and also a lot more time in the sand pits and a lot more time with a good crew pushing technical ability. All right, so we're about three and a half weeks to nationals. Now is about the time I switch all my intervals from on the road to off-road onto the trails, focus more on the skills, so the sand pit's the perfect place to do that. Like I know that fucking rock is in here somewhere. The rim smasher. Why wouldn't you make a new wreck, Curtis? Hmm. Moving rocks. That had everything that we needed. I mean, it's <clears throat> when the weather's this bad, you just need a good group to come together in the woods and. It's the camaraderie that makes sessions like that worth it. In that final lead up to nationals, I felt like while maybe I secluded myself from the, the media and thinking about the race, I didn't seclude myself from the people who have supported me in my effort doing this. You were flying. Yeah, I f***ing cracked that last lap though. <laughs> I saw you on the uphill. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell anybody. <laughs> Coach, coach of the year right there. What was most important to me was to stay home with those closest to me because they're the ones that give me energy and, and strength and confidence. Yeah, not winning nationals is something that I've thought about a lot. And I attach that to my identity as an athlete, really. For the last three years as an elite, three silvers in a row, I know what I'm capable of. You know, you've won a lot of races, but you haven't become national champion yet. You know, that's, it's always, yeah, but, thing. One of the things that frustrated me the most about my own racing was that I got super close to winning the title so many times, but I didn't win my first national championship until I was 27 years old in Madison, Wisconsin in 2012, and it bothered me so much. The good thing about bike racing is that there's always another race to go and there's always another chance and there's always another season. But when you're getting to that age, 27 years old, you realize that there's not gonna be 20 more opportunities. You're really starting to talk, maybe you've got five, six more chances. So you have to put your cards down and you've gotta put it together on the day. Barely.
That, of course, is awesome. There's gonna be a lot of mistakes. You know what? What did Ted Lasso say? You gotta have the memory of a goldfish. Goldfish, happiest animal in the animal kingdom. Why? It's got a 10 second memory. This time of the year in New England and Hartford, very unpredictable weather. The years that we did it before on this course where it's really low lying just next to the river, very icy, tons of snow, really treacherous track. That must be it. Yeah. Yeah, 
to see him actually attain that in Hartford, you know, in his home area, his neck of the woods, all of his peers there that he grew up with, you know, his family was all there and then the snow is falling and his fiance is at the finish line and like, it was like a Christmas movie. We were like, we knew that Curtis had it in him and he's worked, you know, he's put everything into it. So yeah, it was a pretty amazing moment. And I think what was cool for Curtis to see was finally to be able to get that weight lifted off of his shoulders, to be able to put it all down in the day and to take the victory. You know, I, so, I told him um, after he won, you know, you could take, I, I had four in total in a Pan Am championship as well. I said, you could take five. You know, you could still set the record and only be 32. So just keep, you know, keep your focus. It's once you've got one, it's a lot easier to replicate because uh, that first one, the pressure is so immense. But once you finally like take that deep breath, you get through it, you wear and you have that pride of being the national champion of your country, um, things, things are a lot easier. And in first place today, your 2022 USA Cycling Cyclocross National Champion, Curtis Wright! And coming back to the podium for our top spot photo op. I'm Curtis White. I'm the USA Cyclocross National Champion and Cross is here. 